it got well and that in the end your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to have Yeah. 
died for him. And he is a person who will be near us and he will help us through in all our tribulations. God bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you for thank you for the wonderful mission spotlight. Now it's time for our lesson study. This week's lesson study is entitled Meekness in the Crucible, which will be led, which will be led by Pastor Jeffrey. And it's taken from Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Can it be possible with humanity? 
No resentment at all. Everything happens fine. Okay, I'm going to just oblige you and move forward the way how it is supposed to. You know, when we listen to these words, it is very difficult for you and me to have this attitude of meekness because it is defined as enduring injury with patience and without resentment. You know, no wonder we don't hear much about it. It's hardly a great, well respected in different cultures. But this week lessons helps us to understand the importance of meekness, a lesson that we all have to reorient ourselves. Exactly as of where we really stand. It is one of the characteristics of God that you and I to be able to attain it as the days go on, as we experience to be with Christ. And that's the reason the Bible says, okay, so let's see that the Lord is, is good. Is sweeter than honey. Broken bread and bone of wine. You know, all through the Bible, there are a lot of examples. Uh, of people who are broken to serve us. Can you name one or two of them from five uh, from uh, the biblical studies? One or two of them who are so much broken they were unable to just move forward but still they serve others. Any examples we have in the Bible? What are we examples? Joseph was one of the person. He was in Job. He was really being up in every angle, but still you listen to the way how you must be able to react towards those situations that God had intervened and how we to have. One other person. Any other person? Job was a great classic example that we can find. So we can be able to go on and see a lot of examples. But we talk about Joseph was called to a journey that involved betrayal and imprisonment. I want to answer this question. If God calls us for this type of cause like Joseph, how many of us are here ready? But I want Joseph. Are we ready? For victory? For even to serve The Bible says it very clearly before the Lord could come the second time, that the Lord of being will put him in prison for the sake of truth. Right? Am I right or not? For the truth say, you and me will be awarded in prison. Might be no food, might be no shelter, might be pulled out from a wilderness experience. Just like the children of Israel will be led to the wilderness experience. I want to ask you today, we are in a comfortable position. In our homes, in our family, in our work, with our credit balance, in everything. But are we ready for that? It's the question. If you and I are not ready for that, you and I are not ready for the second coming of Jesus. If you and I are not ready for the second coming of Christ, then we are not prepared for the eventuality that God has already planned. If you are not prepared for the eventuality that God has already been planned, then how are we Christians? Why are we Christians? What is the faith that has been able to take us along now? It's a very serious question, sir. If anyone asks if Jesus comes tomorrow, are we ready to go home with him? You know, the Christian experience is a journey, you see. Our life, not the way how we really want it to be, but how the Lord wants it to be. And that's the reason the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9, my ways are not the ways. When the children of Israel from the land of bondage, that is Egypt, when they came out, when God led them, the children of Israel were so happy and they said that, wow, things are going to change now. <clears throat> Everything is going to be so beautiful. We are in the hands of God. The, the path that we are going to tread on is going to be so beautiful. Anyway, we are land up in the land of milk and honey. The land of freedom, from the land of bondage, Egypt, to the land of freedom, that is Canaan's land. So they thought that everything is going to be so beautiful. But the very moment they came out of the land of bondage, they never imagined that they were led into the wilderness. 
Same thing happened with Jesus. In contrary, when Jesus was baptized, he was supposed to be the son of God. Everything is supposed to be so beautiful. But later on, he was playing in the wilderness. One of the church, the 1260 years of experience. Once they came to know the truth, they followed Christ, that they were playing in the wilderness. What happens in the book of Revelation in the last days? We will be playing in the wilderness. The journey seems to be not the way how we really turn out. You see, in a complicated the situation in order that his people likes to become theaters of his grace and care. I like this statement. Our lives is supposed to be theaters for somebody else to look upon. Joseph's life story was just that, was just like a theater way of how you might be able to read that today. Moses' story is just uh, not a part of history, but gives us an opportunity to learn about him and see that whether we can be able to exercise in every angle of our life. Okay, so what the Bible is really trying to teach each one of us is uh, God permits the situation in order that our lives might become a shining light for someone else, in spite of all the difficulties, in spite of all the problems, in spite of God is putting us into the crucible experience so that He can mold us, fashion us according to His will, so that the best thing might be able to come out of us, so that we will be recreated once again in the image. Whatever happens to each one, we know that God is in control and He's going to get us to the end. And that's the story of Moses. That's the story of Jesus. That's the story of Joseph. That's the story of Jacob. That's the story of Abraham. And that's the story of the Old Testament baby us. That's the reason in the book of Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 24, God says, Ezekiel will be assigned to you. You will do just as he has done. When this happens, you will know that I am the sovereign God. You don't know, Ezekiel's example, the people of Israel were going to be convicted of the truth about who God the song of God, and they will see the truth uh, and they experience the fulfillment of the prophecy. That Ezekiel's life symbolized that the suffering that we have faced, uh, who knows how many people will see the song of God to us in our own broken places as well. You know, in every broken pieces of our life, if you and I will uphold Christ, uphold Christ in every life, either it might be imprisonment, either it might be a lack of truth, Either it might be sickness, either it might be difficulty, or whatever the crucible that the Lord is trying to put us in that, we will be able to enhance the drink of meanness in Christ's love that is in control of each one of our lives and each one of the to in this wilderness. If you, I will be able to demonstrate, you know, that character in our lives as we go through. And I tell you, you will be one of the brightest sons. Shine for Jesus Christ in this very last days of time. Any questions? Anything that will contribute? All seems to be quite very serious. Okay. Yes, Brother Charles? Anything to contribute? Mm -hmm. Let's move forward a little bit. Uh, we know the story of Moses in Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 to 14, right? About the, the children of Israel, they started murmuring against Moses. We have many of also against Moses, and a whole lot of things happened there. And uh, God is so angry; He wants to destroy people. And he, 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 he is not so happy with the situation which is prevailing. And that's the time that Moses intercedes on behalf of his children. We are going to it, right? Can this be possible? Can this be possible? You know, God is so angry. He doesn't want to see that the children of his mind in front of his face. He's meaning what he said. He said, I'm going to destroy. I don't want these guys to be their friend of mine. I'm praying on these guys. You know, many times as a pastor, I should think this way. 
every time I swim in this way, you know, why should God tolerate me? You know, I, I, I always feel that I'm not so worthy to do God's ministry every time I felt that way. Uh, but God in His own infinite mercy has used me, so I used to always think that my God wants me even though I'm not worthy of. Bible says it very clearly, my grace is sufficient for you. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we see Moses coming on behalf of the children of Israel and God. He becomes the mediocre person that talking with God. And you can see, I says, please Lord, you see the characteristics of Moses. Just imagine if an enemy comes in front of us, who we describe. Most probably, we are not being able to you know, torment the person who has done something very bad. I remember when I was pastoring the church, so we had two families. Uh, they, 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 they were not in good terms at all. So, one of the one family does, the other family was to be against. So, as a pastor, I had to be here in the center and I to, you know, try to comfort them and tell them, oh, this is not right, this is not right. So when I go to one person and say, uh, so brother, this is not the way how you're supposed to, we should be able to change in this way. I, I he used to come and retaliate against me and say, no, you need to support that guy, not me. So when I go to this person and say, uh, brother and sister, this is not the way how you're supposed to, let's try to, I mean, he said, why do you want to support them, not me? It is very hard to balance between these two families and get them together. And they don't both begin against. And we had a church, uh, after the church service, one family came and shouted at me. Okay, my family and all were there and said, You are not a good pastor. This is not the way how you're supposed to. No, we, are, we don't want you to be a pastor. Wow, that's great. What's right? I had to go to that house once again. I to spend time with them. Trying to explain. But still, they were not going to do it. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when you come out, people like them, what would be your response? How can you be able to reflect Christ's character? How can you be able to stay, not get angry and just get fed up of them and say, just leave them alone? In my 22 years of pastoral experiences, every church, every step, every step is a challenge in experiences. It's very difficult to have this attitude of weakness, humility, and just move forward the way. But I like this great man called Moses because he interceded on their behalf. These are the people who grumbled against Moses. These are the people who are from the day one to the last day. They had this golden calf, went against God's will. Most probably Moses had all the authority to curse them and say, Wow, enough is enough with you. But this guy shows an extraordinary character of meekness and interceding on the behalf of children. So Moses becomes a type of Christ, interceding on your behalf of my behalf. You know how many times that we have uh, gone against God's will. God said you should do this, but you're not now. Go to the middle of the chip yourself. Go to the word of God and check ourselves. How many times you have disowned God in our words, in our actions, in our thoughts? Very practical way of life. But still, God is so tolerable and is one of the character is meekness, and He has shown that day in and day out. May the door of your sins might be a scarlet any time you come to Him and is willing to accept. Again, you go back and sin again. Again, you come back to Christ and you still believe to forgive. The character of weakness, interceding for grace. The Lord of heaven is interceding on your behalf and my behalf. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I have been voluntarily disobedient children. Disobedience is a part of our blood. There is no way that we can be able to change that. How many times we have disowned that? But still, Jesus, by his grace, is interceding on your behalf and my behalf, just like Moses interceded. 
Yes, I want to go to the spot for this is the question. This is a question being very simple. Think about the people around you who you think are the least deserving of grace. How can you, with meekness and selfless humility, be a revelation of God's grace to them? Question to each one of us. Can you and I become a revelation of God's grace for the least of the person who deserves grace? And come up, uh, have you encountered anyone that way? What was your response? Was it positive? Was it negative? Any less you forget your answer tonight? I remember one incident uh, which happened in uh, one of the churches where I worked with. I see a man who was so much happy when the pastor came and slapped him. Uh, this, this, this is the real story. I gave the person and next day went to that house to pray for them. Weakness is a character. It is simply said that enduring injury with patience and without resentment. As we exemplify, we exemplify the injury. Any questions? All aside, nobody to contribute. This is going to be a sermon, not another sermon. Yes, at least if you can learn something out of it. Okay, so I think so. The name of the Lord will glorify. Yeah, let's move forward. Love in those who hurt us. The Bible says, love your neighbors as yourself. Is it possible to come loving neighbors as ourselves? Can it be possible? Huh? Can be possible. Can be possible. Well, they did not very practical sense. Okay? Uh, we are talking something very practical, very realistic. Can we love our neighbor just the way how I love my son and daughter? You know what does it mean? It simply means that what all I try to do, my son and my daughter will I be able to do for a stranger? No. Then why is my family love the neighbors? In, in what way should we be able to love our neighbors? That's not the way. Okay, do we have some crosses in order to love our neighbors? And Jesus says it very clearly, go a little bit further, love your enemies. The way you love yourself. Just imagine, if you and I are not able to love our neighbors, can we be able to love our enemies that way? Come on, folks, let's be more practical Christians. We are listening the word of God from the time that we are born, most probably. We all are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry, 11 years of unprecedented, 11 years of unprecedented celebrating. How far are we close to heaven? How far are we close to Jesus? How far are we close to the word of God? That doesn't mean that. We are perfect, no. But what I mean to say is, let us make Christianity more practical, more accessible. And that's the reason the Bible says, I want you to be the light of the world. Being the light of the world means much more than what we can be able to be a more theoretical Christian than a practical Christian. You see? The Bible says it's very clear for you and me. Someone once said, loving our enemies then does not mean that we are supposed to love the dirt in which the bird is buried. You see? A bird is buried in the dirt. What happens to the human eye is we see the dirt, not the bird. We see what? The dirt, not the bird. What does it mean? It simply means that we love the world which is in the dust. God does not love us because we are by nature lovable though, but we become lovable because He loves us. Why should you and I love our neighbors and love our enemies? It's not because we have the characteristics of the lovability in our life. It is not that way. But the only characteristic that He wants us to learn from Him 
is because he loved us. This part of uh, what we just said. Let's 
spoke a little bit further and complete the lesson here. What is the Lord telling each one of us? So often the most proud people, the most arrogant and pushy are those who suffer from both estate. Do you agree with that? Very much. Their arrogance, their pride, and total lack of weakness or humility exist as to come up, perhaps even unconsciously, for something lacking inside. So how do we drink? How do we respond to them? Is we don't see the external part of it. Why they push me? There's something behind it. Why they are bad? There's something behind it. So we have to address the issue there. And that's the reason meekness plays something important. I like the uh, statement where Eric Boy says in the uh, uh, Desire of Ages, page 301. The difficulties that we have to encounter may be very much lessened by the meekness which hides itself in Jesus Christ. If it poses the humility of a master, we shall rise above the slights, the rebuffs, the unknowingness to which we are daily exposed to. And they will see is to cast the gloom over the spell. The highest evidence of nobility in a Christian is self-control. He who under abuse of cruelty fails to maintain a calm and trustful spirit robs God of his right to reveal in him his own perfection of character. Loneliness of heart is the strength that gives victory to the followers of Christ. It is the token of their connection with the course of our heart. It's the only way that we could be able to demonstrate his love. All the characteristics of humans on this earth for each one of us come in our lives. No questions? Did I cover the whole thing? Did I leave anything? Those who uh, read this absolute lesson? Uh, yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to know each one of you. Let us be much more practical Christians. Practical Christians, we won't try out something different. And allow Christ to bring in the heart. And you could see the change within yourself. And may the Lord guide us through as we practice being with an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And we could produce the same meekness, meekness, just the way how Moses, Joseph, Daniel, and all these people were able to. And only that can happen when we allow the Spirit of the Lord to work in each of us. God is each of us.
gracious Heavenly Father. We thank you for your offerings that have come to our sanctuary. You have blessed us immensely and as a blessing that we enjoy so greatly. We brought in most of the blessings as an offering. May these offerings be used for the fatherlands of the work, not only here but in the of the world. May we bring more offerings so that the work may be progressed in the community and for those who need our help. Bless all those who brought the offering. May this mission offers be used for them glory and honor because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, yeah, now we have.